vegetable gardening, and that's composting. How many of you already compost in some way? Nobody compost? Well, I'm sure everyone already has the means available to start composting. So maybe inside your home you have an old used trash can that you don't use, or who has table scraps, right? So we all have means for composting. So we'll go ahead and start a little bit more um, with that. We're going to use technology in today's class, so everybody should have a clicker. And with those clickers, you will be able to answer some of our questions today so we have a little bit more data. So our first question is, have you ever utilized a clicker before? If you have, press A for yes and B for no. Okay, so the majority of you have not used a clicker and that's okay. We'll have one more practice question. So how many of you are male or female? If you're male, you'll press A, and if you're female, you'll press B. Okay, so one next question. Do you currently compost? If you do, press A for yes or B for no. So why would we want to compost? What are some of the benefits behind composting? One of those is recycling. We'll be able to reuse some of those objects that we already have in our home. It also helps us have a better soil structure if we're doing gardening outside. Uh, we can also add more nutrients into our soil in a natural way. So we can lower our use of synthetic fertilizers. Uh, it enriches the soil. We can have brighter, bigger flowers because we have a more nutritious soil for the amphibian. So what is composting? We know why we should do it, but what exactly is it? Well, there's a little debate about that. Uh, Webster says that it's a mixture of decayed organic matter used as a fertilizer. So compost is a thing. Uh, where others say that composting is actually a process, the biological reduction of organic waste to hummus. Okay, so it's really up to you. It can either be a thing or a process. For me personally, it's a process because we are going to be doing this for a very long period of time. So let's talk about how you can get it started in your home. The first thing we need to think about are the players of the game. Composting has numerous players that we have to have within the compost pile in order for it to work. So we need our decomposers. Our decomposers actually break down what's inside of our compost so that our plants can actually utilize it. So those things are made of microorganisms and intervertebrates like mites, millipedes, and earthworms. You can see in our drawing here a breakdown of what those different decomposers look like. So we know we have players in the game. What do players have to have in order to live? What do the big football players need to do? They need to eat, right? So we need to think about feeding the players of our game. So our compost should be thought of as a feed source, not just compost. If we feed our players correctly, they're going to come in so that we have. So from now on, we're going to refer to our compost stuffs as brown stuff and green stuff. Pretty simple. The brown stuff is carbon. Carbon provides the carbohydrates that our players need in order to survive. It gives them their energy source. Nitrogen, which is our green stuffs, provide protein which give our players muscles so that they can live. So, we need to think about our compost as green and brown. So what makes a green stuff? Well, green stuffs are the things like our food scraps. So, uh, our grass clippings, our leaf greens, hair, kind of gross to think about, but hair, fruit rinds, vegetable peelings, weeds, manures, coffee grounds, these are the things that we all traditionally think about putting into our compost, okay? But, let's answer a question. Green stuff provide what? A, they provide protein. B, they provide fats. Or C, carbohydrates. Very good. They provide our protein source. So let's move on to the brown stuff. The brown stuff provides us our carbon and our carbohydrates. These things are things such as straw, hay, sawdust, our leaves that fall during the fall, wood chips, 
and paper. So most of these products we do have on hand, but again, not necessarily what we're thinking about going into our compost. So, here's another question for you. Brown stuffs provide what? A, protein, B, fats, or C, carbohydrates.
again, all you have to do is turn the pile, and that will help adjust your temperatures. So, here's another question. The optimum choice for compost temperature would be A, 60 degrees, B, 120 degrees, or C, 200 degrees. Very good. We want it to be at B, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Placing your pile or your compost bin is very important. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different structures that you could have. You may have a standard standalone pile, which means you just have a big heap of compost, which will work. Uh, it doesn't take much investment, but your neighbors may not like it. Uh, another option is a woven wire. You need at least one inch galvanized chicken wire. It can also be very inexpensive. It can be moved throughout your yard. You can do a picket fence, which will help keep the pile in. And it's also a little bit nicer on the eye. Uh, but again, something that's going to take up quite a bit of room in your backyard. You can also do a trash can or barrel type composter. And later in this class, we're actually going to learn how to build one of these so you can take it home and do it yourself. Uh, these are nice because they're much neater. Your neighbors won't know that you're actually composting. They'll just think it's a trash can, and it's very easy to turn. You can use those wood pallets, which is another form of recycling that you can get uh, locally and use as well in your backyard. A three-chamber bin is an option if you plan on doing a lot of composting and have the different stages. As you can see here, this compost pile is just starting while the middle one is almost done and the final one is one that you can go ahead and put in your garden. This way you can keep adding your scraps year-round and all the time. You can also purchase composters from many of your local home goods stores and these are a great option but they're often fairly expensive. And that's one reason why we're going to talk today about building your own simply out of a trash can that you may not use any longer. There are problems that can come with composting. So it's important that we know how to troubleshoot or cure any of those problems that we're having. What could be a sour odor? This is caused by too much moisture or it's too hot. Simple remedy is that you need to go out and turn your pot. There could be low temperatures, which means that your compost isn't working. Uh, at this point, you can add water, a little extra moisture, and again, turn the pile. If anything's wrong, you need to turn the pile. So, here's another question for you. The best action you can take to improve compost health is A, just leave it alone, B, water the pile, or C, turn the pile. Are very smart. You just got to go out there and turn those piles. So, here's another question for you. Do you plan to continue or start composting in the future? A is for yes and B is for no. Most of you do. So, we've already talked today about the players of our game. We need to remember that our compost is really just trying to feed those microorganisms and invertebrates that are living inside of our compost pile. So we need to make sure that we have the right healthy balance, a 25 to one ratio of our green foodstuffs and our brown foodstuffs so that we have a healthy compost. Here in a minute, we're actually gonna get up out of our chairs and we're gonna build our own compost bin that you can take home. So everybody get up and let's move on. Now we're actually gonna build our own garbage can composter. So we need to first think about the different things that we're going to need. So what we have here is just your standard garbage can and as you can see it's got a great lid on it that we can snap down and we want to have at least a 40 to 55 gallon barrel or trash can. Um, and the reason for that is that it'll actually give us enough space so that we can have an adequate amount of compost. So we have purchased this. The next thing that you might need are some bungee straps because with this particular trash can, the lid doesn't lock in place. And it's very important that when we're finished that we're able to secure the lid. So we'll do that with our bungee cord. So I'll let you hold those for the time being. The next thing that we are going to need to have is a drill. And we'll also need a drill bit. Today we're using a 3 8 inch drill bit. 
um, because you want the holes to be about a half an inch at least. Um, the half an inch that we're going to put the holes inside the trash can are going to allow for aeration because one of the most important things we talked about earlier today was they need air and moisture and the correct amount of food. So this is going to allow that to happen. Um, it's not going to be too difficult. We are going to drill holes the whole entire way around our trash can and we want to have at least six to nine different rows throughout. So I will let, show you all how to do that and then I'll let one of you take a practice. We're going to take our lid off. Okay. And then, thank you Christy for helping me hold that. We're going to spin it. Yeah, if you'll just hold it. We'll um, go straight up and down with our drill. Make sure it's going in the right direction. We'll help. And just go straight through, okay? So we're going to put these every four to five inches around. So now, Christy, I'm going to let you try, and I'll hold it for you. So we'll just turn it up here, and then every four, yep, you just push it down. Great job. It's not too bad, right? So we're going to go all the way around. Sarah, would you like to try here? Let Sarah drill her hole. All right. And then we'll let Miss Nan try. As you can see, it's really easy. Anybody can do it. Great. So now uh, we'll just take the time to continue.